Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here. So coming to you from a somewhat cleaner reloading bench. Um, but we are finally starting the reloading process for the Remington 700 CDL that I picked up not too long ago over at Mr. Big Guns in Huntsville. Uh, you guys have seen a couple of videos on that where I kind of give a, an overview and my thoughts on the overall quality the fit and the finish and sort of the build quality of that Remington 700 CDL. That's the new post-bankruptcy uh, Remington, and I believe those are manufactured in New York, um, that particular rifle. And so just in my opinion, again, just based off the appearance of the rifle, that if it shoots half as good as it looks, it's going to be an amazing uh, rifle for many years to come so it the fit and finish on it is awesome go check out those videos but i wanted to start with just kind of walking you through what i've what i've done i just finished prepping this brass it's 50 pieces of 243 winchester brass but 25 are hornady and the other 25 are remington uh, i am not a big fan of either one of those brands of brass well i'm a bigger fan of hornady than i am remington i the only time i've actually had decent luck with remington brass is in the Savage, uh, the 250 3000 Savage uh, project that I that I did. I've got, I think it's in a playlist somewhere on my channel. You can go check that out if you want to. But it was the only brand of brass that I could find at the time and needed that for a project and got a couple of bags in. It worked out fine. Um, but anytime I've shot factory ammunition in Rem and it's always been Remington Core Lock, so this, this stuff. Right. It's, it's always been this stuff that I've had uh, issues with, just shooting factory ammo. Um, I believe one video not too long ago, I believe it was a 30-06 video, I think it was like four out of the 20 pieces or something like that ended up with splits down the side of the case. You know, and it's not it's not like the stuff had been sitting for years and years and years. Um and it wasn't reloads, it was just factory ammunition, the core lock stuff. It's just, that's kind of been my experience or uh, split necks, that type of stuff. Now Hornady, the past couple of times I've, I've purchased Hornady brass uh, for reloading purposes, not factory ammunition, but just reloading purposes, I've kind of been let down a little bit, right? There's been a couple of times where I've had like a split neck or a split uh, case on the side and they only give you 50 pieces in a bag and that stuff's not cheap. Um, so when, when that happens and now you're down a piece or two right off the bat, it's just a little frustrating, right? A place like Starline uh, or a brand like Starline, those guys right there, typically uh, in my experience, every time I've ordered like a bag of a hundred or something like that, you almost always get 101. In, in my experience, I've always gotten one extra every single time I've purchased Starline Brass. Same thing for Lapua. Uh, there we go, I pronounced it correctly that time. It's been my experience with them as well. Every time I've used their brass, I've received one extra piece, right? Which which is nice, just in case something happens. Uh, other brands like Alpha Munitions, uh, Peterson, I've never had an issue with. You know, you get the quantity that you order and I've never had a problem with an issue with the brass, how it came from the factory. So, but this is stuff that I've got laying around. This is once fired brass. And I, I wanna kinda walk you through that process on how we're gonna get that ready, how I got that ready uh, to reload, right? So pretty much had some of this stuff sitting around from previous projects or just range pickups. And so 25 pieces of Hornady, 25 Remington. What I did was I used a Lee universal decapping die and went through and just deprimed everything on the Mech Marksman press. Went ahead, deprimed all 50 pieces, threw those in the Frankfurt Arsenal uh, wet tumbler, and then used some stainless steel, some stainless steel pins. And this styrofoam cooler is like the perfect size um, for this setup from Frankfurt Arsenal. It just those I think I bought that cooler for like a dollar or something. You one of those you pick up from like Walmart or. A gas station or something dirt cheap but those uh those baskets essentially that, that plastic those separators they they fit down in there perfectly and so whenever so what i did was after i decapped them through 
the pieces in here, along with some 6.5 Creedmoor stuff and 308. Um, threw all that in here. I use Frankfurt Arsenal's brass cleaning solution, dump some of that in, fill it with hot water, and then I set it on the uh, little base here and let it do its thing, turn it on, and I tumbled this stuff for like an hour and a half, maybe an hour. And then once I was done with that, of course, dump everything out into the cooler, um, separate out all the brass and the pins because you're gonna have stuff, you know, you're gonna have pins get down in the brass, so you just gotta make sure you dump everything out. From there, I put the the brass on like a baking sheet or baking pan, cookie sheet, something like that. I throw it in my oven in the house, 170 degrees for a few hours. I just let them sit in there and bake. Uh, try to get rid of all the moisture. And then once I did that, brought them out here, you know, and I'm inspecting them all along the way, obviously, before I even start the decapping process. I'm, I'm giving them a really good look over just to make sure, you know, there's, again, like I said, no split necks, nothing like that. I don't want to invest a lot of time and energy into something only to find out later in the process, hey, shouldn't have even used this piece to begin with. So I try to do a lot of, a lot of that type of work on the front end. Um, just to make sure I'm not wasting my time. And so once I did that, um, everything's dry, put everything, you know, put all 50 pieces in this little Lyman block, made sure I've got 25 Hornady, 25 Remington, not mixing up the head stamps. And then at that point, I used the Lee resizing die, full length resizing die for 243 Winchester. And pretty much, So you hear that, right? That's the cam over action in the press. Now that's according to Lee's um, instructions on how to set this die up. Pretty much what you do is you run the ram all the way up. You screw your die in until it touches the shell holder. You lower the ram, you go like another quarter turn, something along those lines. That'll give you the, the cam over action and you're ready to go. You're ready to resize your brass. Now in this setting on this press, the way everything sets up, I'm using a Lee shell holder as well. I uh, was pushing the shoulders back five thousandths, which is uh, roughly twice as much or even more than what I normally do. Uh, but again, this stuff is from unknown origin and I'm gonna fire it in my rifle. So I just wanna go ahead and resize it, get a really good full length resize on it so I don't have any uh, chambering or feeding issues uh, right off the bat. So I did that, I use, here lately I've been using a lot of Imperial sizing dye wax. This stuff lasts forever. I've had this little tin for Lord knows how long. Um, put a little bit on my fingers and then just kind of lube each case uh, very lightly. It does not take much at all and the resizing process, pretty straightforward after that, right? So just running every piece up into the dye. After I do that, I've got just your standard dishcloth over here that I wipe all the brass off with. Once I finished with that, I came over to the Lyman Case Prep Express, one of the best pieces of reloading equipment I've ever purchased. And this is where I do all of the brass prep post sizing. Um, I'll use the case length gauge and shell holder with the little adapter uh, that Lee that Lee sells. I'll just plug everything, you know, hook everything in, tighten everything down. This 243 Winchester gauge and then that's how I trim my brass. Got my power turned off here. So that's how I trim my brass and then of course you can do your chamfer deburr. Uh, I like to run the brass um, down over a brush and then clean off the uh, clean out the primer pocket as well. So that's what I did um, after resizing. Now before uh, so I, I, I lied to you a little bit. After I deprimed the brass, I did do a couple of additional things that I typically do anyway on whenever I buy brand new brass. What I'll do is I will uniform the primer pockets. I have a redding, a little hand tool where I, where I will uniform the primer pockets and that's just to create a uniform depth of the primer pocket. And then it's this little thing here, it's that little cutter, but I've got a redding handheld tool in the house that I use. And then I also deburr the flash holes for all the brass. Right, I do that. Um, 
on all the brass that I that I buy new. Uh, Lapua, you typically, I don't know if I've ever really had an issue deburring those or even having burrs and, and that type of stuff in that brass. I think Alpha was the same way. So high, really high quality, top-notch stuff. You're really not going to have much. You're not going to remove much material. Uh, I do remove a little bit from Starline, not much at all. These are removed a ton of material. Um, on the, it was interesting on the primer pocket depth, all 25 pieces of the Hornady, you know, I ended up removing um, material, you know, and cutting everything to a uniform depth. And I almost didn't touch any part of the Remington primer pocket. So Remingtons are already a little bit deeper, uh, obviously, from the factory compared to this stuff, uh, this Hornady stuff. So I just thought that was interesting. And then, of course, I did all of the flash hole deburring. And so removed quite a bit of material overall from the 50 pieces. But I have everything pretty much um, in a similar state. Right, those are things that I can control, that I can change, and I can manipulate. And so, I do it that way to try to to create a somewhat uniform starting point, right, for these 50 pieces because we're pretty much going to be loading up the same charges, um, the same charge weights and charge weight range in the Hornady and the the Remington. I just want to do a little bit of a comparison just to see how they shoot between the two different uh, brands of brass because everything else will be the same. They were prepped the same. Same primer, same powder, everything will be thrown at the same time in a Charge Master lot. So, fairly decent consistency um, between between all the loads. And then we'll be going with this stuff. Hornady VMAX 87 grain. Um, these are just extremely well-made bullets in terms of tolerancing and specs and all that stuff uh, that they're held to. So, I figure why not give the rifle and this load uh, a really good chance to perform and, and do well right off the bat. And I think the VMAX is going to be the way to go. Now this video is definitely running longer than I anticipated, but don't forget, I do have a mountain of six millimeter bullets. It's all this stuff here. All of these are six millimeter. Uh, plus I've got some up there. So I've got a ton of six millimeter stuff that I want to shoot. Um, one I'm definitely interested in is this Burger Flat Base. I shot that out of six arc, it shot really well. But I've got a bunch of these Nosler uh, ballistic tips, the 95s, the 90s, I've got a ton of those. Um, so that, that's really gonna be what we gear uh, the hunting load around, will be either the 90 or the 95s. Uh, one of those two, we'll just see how they shoot and go from there. So I have not chosen a powder yet. I probably need to do that. So while we're here, let's just go. Two forty three Winchester. They kind of cluster their stuff together, 85 up to 90. We're gonna go with the 87 grain VMAX, which is right there. So our cartridge overall length, 2.640. Uh, let's see, powders. We're not necessarily looking to push max velocity, but if you were, according to their data, you need to go with Power Pro 4000 MR, which I actually have that powder, but I'll be using what I have left, I'll be using the 6.5 Creedmoor because based on the results I got with the, uh, the Spear Impact Bullet. Um, I may go with H4350. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, that's probably what I'll go with, actually. H4350. I've got an eight-pound jug of that stuff, so I've got plenty of that powder on hand. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do that. We'll just go with H4350. We're not going to go up near max. We'll probably hang out, uh, maybe start around that 41-grain mark and, and work our way up, you know, not making massive jumps each time, and then we'll just load the same... Uh, you know, we'll just replicate that over here in the Remington and just see how it goes. So, yeah, so you guys stay tuned. I just wanted to kind of walk y'all through, you know, my brass prep process. That's essentially the process I follow every time, minus the flash hole deburring and the primer pocket uniforming. That's something you do one time, then you don't have to do it again. Um, I typically do that whenever I get the brass in brand new. I'll just go ahead and do all that, get it out of the way. And then from there, it's just the normal, what you guys saw where I decap, 
tumble the brass, dry the brass in the oven, come back, resize it, and then I prep everything here. So now we're to the point where I can take this stuff in, throw in some primers, which we will probably be using. I don't know. I, I've got I've got a few Remington left. I may I may go with that. I hadn't really decided yet. I've got some Remington, some Federal, some CCI. I just haven't decided on what large rifle primer I'll be using. That's what this brass requires. So, yeah. All right. Well, you guys stay tuned, and uh, let me go get the stuff loaded up, and then we'll head to the range. All right. So we're back from the range now. I filmed the for the the first portion of this video, the first like 15 minutes or so. I filmed it a month ago. It's taken me a month to the, basically get to the range in multiple sessions and get the information that I have thus far. I'm still not done, but I'm basically 90% there. So I'm just gonna film this. Here are the results from the Remington 700 CDL chambered in 243 Winchester. And this was the uh, Hornady 87 grain VMAX load. This is where I loaded up 25 rounds, um, 25 rounds in Hornady brass and 25 rounds in Remington brass. And it's the exact same load. I did um, five five shot groups, or it was five three shot groups. And then out of those additional two shots per group, I took velocity numbers. Um, and so here are the measurements of the groups. Now I will point out that this last group, this so this is Hornady brass, this is Remington brass. And, and I basically shot these groups. When I shot them, there was only one time where I knew that I made a bad shot, 100%. I even said before I before I looked back down range after I, after I shot, I said, I pulled that one to the right simply because when the, when the gun went off, I just, I knew I was like, yep, that was, a, that was a really bad pull. Everything else, all these other shots, I felt really, really good. So 29 out of the 30, because that was the accuracy amount that I was shooting was 30 rounds. I felt great. 29 out of 30, but that, that last one on the Hornady, which we can look at the target. So this was the first group with the Hornady. So it goes first, second, third, fourth, fifth. That's the one where I pulled it all the way out to the right. Uh, so I was consistently hitting, you know, our, our point of impact trended upward, right? That, that's where I was aiming. Uh, so that's point of aim. So you can see with the Hornady, as we increased our charge weight, we kind of, we were going high and to the right, right? And then same thing here, that was my last point of aim and then point of impact, high and to the right. So I was trending kind of upward um, on my point of impact versus my point of aim. Now, if you'll remember, this is that 95 grain uh, factory ammo group. That was that Remington 95 grain stuff that I used for the barrel break-in. I used 17 rounds for the barrel break-in. And then I saved three, I just shot a three shot group and that shot really well. So that's what's kind of giving me hope in terms of the accuracy potential. When I saw that, I was pretty excited. And then I loaded up uh, the 87 grain VMAX with H4350. And so then that was the Hornady brass, right? Now down here, this is the Remington brass. So this was the first, second, third, fourth, fifth group. So you had a couple of groups in there uh, that weren't that great, but you had three that were really good. Um, you know, in, in my opinion, you know, better than, than what we saw up here with the Hornady brass. But just overall, I mean, you can see this gun is a shooter. Like I said in the videos that I've done previously showing off this rifle, this is the post-bankruptcy model. So the new Rim Arms Remington 700 CDL the thing flat out shoots and i said and i said it multiple times if it shot half as good as it looked this was going to be amazing gun an amazing gun and it it does it shoots really really well um so that was with h4350 remington um, large rifle primers and there's the overall length so that's uh that was the test that i did with it jumping three tenths on our charge weight and 
it shot amazing. Here are the velocity numbers. So like I said, I gathered two uh, velocity data points at each charge weight. This is the Hornady stuff. So this is the Hornady head stamp brass. This is the Remington. I've still got four more to shoot. So I've got two at the 41.9 and two at the 42.2, but I didn't want to wait. Uh, I've got to get back out to the range to finish that out. I just ran out of time on my last range trip, but I'm not waiting any longer to get this video uploaded because like I said, it's already been a month. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can just see the accuracy, right? I mean, we were kind of slowly working our way larger in group size, it just kind of worked out that way. And then that last one, again, I, I pulled it uh, off to the right and I, I knew I did on that one, but it is what it is. So 1.751, that's the group size. Uh, the Remington, you know, you had those couple that were just over an inch, but man, they shot a couple of those groups were really, really nice. So yeah, the, and I let my barrel cool in between each shot. Uh, on these range sessions, it was like five minutes in between each shot was the minimum that I would let it cool uh, before I took another shot. So yeah, uh, let's see. Oh, that three shot, it was the Remington 95 grain tipped core lock. Uh, so that was after I shot those 17 for barrel break in. And then I did that three shot group. It was 0.785. So it's a shooter, guys. I, I don't know what to tell you. Again, this is my only copy in terms of the brand new Remington, but I've already shown you the quality. It's top notch in my opinion. Uh, I know some people have commented about how the, the gun is overpriced. I hear you. I, I hear you. It, it's it's definitely, they're pricing it at a point where, you know, you, you have other options at your disposal, right? You could definitely go get your Bagara, Tika, something along those lines, a CVA, uh, you know, there are other rifle manufacturers out there. Those are, when you start talking about this price point of around 900 to a thousand dollars, you're starting to get into some better options in terms of Savage, right? Some of the things that they put out. So it's, there's definitely a lot of competition around that mark uh, that they're pricing this thing at, but it shoots so far it shoots lights out and this is very limited testing, right? I mean, this is only one bullet, one powder, uh, a very small charge weight range that we tested and it just, it shot really, really well. So I'm looking forward to a whole lot more testing in it. I've got to get some more brass though. I've only got the, uh, I've only got the 25 pieces of Hornady and 25 pieces of Remington. I think I might have some more laying around here somewhere, but I just need to go buy some uh, and just start over with, you know, maybe like some star line or something like that. So, but that's where we're going to leave it. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.